I challenge you to ask your doctor if he's ever seen a case of isolated protein deficiency. They may be misguided in encouraging you to consume more protein, but if they think about it, they will never have actually seen a case in their whole career. And here's another concern. The Clean Label Project looked at 160 protein supplement products and did an analysis on them and found that 47% of them had excess levels of cadmium and or lead. These are things that we definitely don't want. Uh, unfortunately, it was actually the plant-based ones that had the highest levels of cadmium and lead. The hidden dangers of too much protein. Hi, I'm Dr. Lee Carisco. When it comes to protein, more is better, right? Absolutely not. There are definitely problems with consuming too much protein. Also, the wrong type can be a problem as well. Now, if you listen to social media influencers, you'd think that we are in an epidemic of protein deficiency. I have been a medical doctor since 1988, and I have never seen a case of dietary protein deficiency. That is, isolated dietary protein deficiency. Sure, you'll see the odd person with anorexia nervosa or advanced pancreatic cancer, and they're wasting away, and they're not getting enough protein, but they're not getting enough calories, they're not getting enough vitamins, they're not getting enough minerals. True isolated protein deficiency is almost unheard of. Dr. Walter Kempner, uh, back in the uh, 20th century, uh, for about 20 or 30 years, between about 1930 and 1950 or so, was treating patients with uh, renal failure by putting them on a very high carbohydrate, very low protein diet. And it was called the rice diet. The rice was the main source of their calories. They ate rice and fruit and table sugar basically. And it was astonishing how well these people did. They would lose weight like crazy, their kidney function would improve, their high blood pressure would normalize. And that was back in a day when there were no medical treatments for high blood pressure. People with uh, blindness due to diabetes and hypertension would actually start to restore their vision. And they were only consuming about 20 grams of protein today. It was incredibly low in protein, and these people did surprisingly well. Now, it's not uncommon to see uh, patients that have uh, an issue with insufficient protein in their blood, which is called hypoproteinemia. But the reason they have that low protein in their blood is usually because their liver is failing. It cannot take the amino acids from their food and assemble them into one particular pro protein called albumin. They don't have enough albumin and therefore what happens is the fluid in their blood seeps into their abdominal cavity and they get these big huge swollen bellies. This is a fairly common scenario and my involvement as a radiologist is uh, to drain this fluid off. I've taken at times even like a dozen liters of fluid off of a person because they've accumulated so much liquid in their belly. Now, that is not a dietary deficiency of protein. That is a failure of the liver to assemble the amino acids into the appropriate proteins. So a true dietary uh, protein deficiency is exceedingly rare. I challenge you to ask your doctor if he's ever seen a case of isolated protein deficiency. They may be misguided in encouraging you to consume more protein, but if they think about it, they will never have actually seen a case in their whole career. A uh, few doctors are going to dispute that too much protein uh, isn't involved in the formation of kidney stones. And there's actually multiple mechanisms involved. Um, uric acid stones particularly are formed by eating too much animal products. Uh, it was interesting, a number of years ago, there was a, a co-worker. She was having this exquisite toe pain, and she was only about 40 years old. She gave the classic story that even sleeping at night, she couldn't have the weight of the bed sheets on her toe. And so she got an x-ray and she had a classic type of bone erosion at her first metatarsal phalangeal joint, the first big toe joint. And I'm there, this looks like gout. And I said, you know, what are you eating? Well, she was eating a typical American diet with a lot of meat, but she was on a kick eating a lot of shrimp almost every night. Shrimps are extremely high in pur purines, uh, which are a precursor to uric acid. So she had gout from eating too much shrimp. Uh, the point being that animal foods do lead to uh, kidney stones. And in my own experience, I had issues with terrible kidney stones because I was eating a very high meat diet for years. And I had a few really bad episodes of kidney stones. One point, uh, it was life-threatening because I was in the unusual circumstance of having kidney stones in both ureters at the same time. So my kidneys were blocked. 
They couldn't filter my blood. I went into acute renal failure. My serum creatinine, which is a measure of kidney function, went sky high. And that's actually immediately life-threatening because renal failure can cause you to have too much potassium in your blood, which can cause your heart to stop. So it became a big deal to have emergency stents placed. Um, so I had the stents placed, my kidney function normalized, but uh, I had all kinds of problems. It, it took actually weeks to deal with all those problems. Now, here's the important thing though. Since I changed my diet to an entirely plant-based diet, I have had no problems with kidney stones. It's been probably, oh, 12, 13, 14 years since that episode. The normal recurrence rate for kidney stones, symptomatic kidney stones, is very high. About 50% of people over the course of 10 years will have a symptomatic recurrence. I've had no problems. It's just an anecdote. Uh, but the thing to keep in mind is animal food is intimately related with the formation of kidney stones. If you ever have a full-blown uh, case of renal colic, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's exquisitely painful. Now, the recommended daily intake for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram of lean body weight. Some people say it should be up around 1.1. Now, even if you're trying to build muscle, the amount that you need is only in the range of about 1.3 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight, uh, which can easily be obtained by just eating a regular diet, even a vegan diet without too much planning. The average American is consuming about 1.5 grams. Now, you get these uh, internet pundits saying, you got to get your protein, you're not getting enough protein, and recommend that you have one gram per pound of body weight which would be 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. That is way too high for good health and completely unnecessary. Now, age-related decline in kidney function has been tied to the consumption of animal protein. There's hardly a day that goes by for me as a radiologist where somebody comes in for a CAT scan uh, where they're requesting the usage of IV contrast. IV contrast is a stress on the kidneys and can make the kidneys acutely worse. Then the issue comes up, well, I've got these failing kidneys. Is it safe to give them contrast at all? Should we reduce the dose? Uh, what these people don't realize is that they have failing kidneys probably to a large degree due to lifelong consumption of animal foods. Dr. McDougall makes a really good point, is that the consumption of animal protein is a long-term poison. It takes 20, 30, 40 years before you start getting sick from it. It's not like when you take a pill of cyanide and you're dead within seconds. It's a long-term cumulative effect, and it has a negative effect on our kidneys. Even the mainstream National Kidney Foundation has this to say about consuming plant foods. Eating more plant-based foods, such as vegetables and grains, in place of animal-based foods, such as red meat, may help prevent and slow the progression of chronic kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. And they're pretty mainstream. There's nothing really outlandish to say that plant proteins are better for your kidneys. Uh, DaVita is a large chain of dialysis centers in the United States, and they actually advocate that their patients eat a more plant-based diet. Now, why would that be? Well, if they can mitigate the degree of kidney failure that they have to some degree, maybe they can be on the dialysis unit a little shorter and they can put more people through. So there's a monetary incentive for them to encourage patients to consume more of a plant-based diet. Brad Pilon, in his excellent book, How Much Protein, did a review of the world literature on how much protein is needed to actually build muscle if you're working out with weights. So his whole premise was actually how much do you need to build muscle? Not just for regular people, they're just trying to maintain. He came to the conclusion that the amount of protein needed is actually not that much, only in the range of about 70 to 120 grams per day, which most people can get very readily, even on a plant-based diet. I hit that every day. Whenever I do a review on chronometer of my daily intake of nutrients, I'm always in that range, maybe even a little higher. Early in the book, he makes a passing reference to uh, research showing a potential connection between cancer, diabetes, and acne. He doesn't get too far in the weeds because it's really not the main focus of the book, but he did recognize that there is potentially a link there, which I think is actually well established. T. Colin Campbell really established the connection between animal protein and cancer. We've talked about that in other videos. Diabetes as well is highly connected with animal protein. And uh, acne, interestingly, does not occur in cultures where they eat a highly plant-based diet. 
The Adventist Health Study showed a direct connection between the amount of animal protein consumed and diabetes and obesity. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Brad Pilon reviews a number of studies in his book, and one was particularly interesting. It was a study of four groups of men. Group one did no exercise. Group two lifted weights. Group three was put on a large dose of testosterone. It was 600 milligrams per week. That's a very large dose, more than I think anybody would ever need uh, pursuing testosterone replacement therapy, like probably more than twice as much. The fourth group lifted weights and took the testosterone. The results are really interesting. Group one that did nothing didn't gain any muscle. Group two that worked out with weights over a period of 10 weeks, they gained four and a half pounds of muscle. Group three that took the testosterone gained six pounds of muscle doing nothing over 10 weeks. And group four that worked out with weights and took the testosterone gained 13 and a half pounds of muscle. That's a lot of muscle. Now here's the interesting thing within the context of this conversation is they didn't take any food supplements um, and they were in that range of only 70 to 120 grams of protein per day and they were able to build as much as 13 and a half pounds of muscle in 10 weeks. So like why are you taking a protein supplement? It's completely unnecessary. It's if you're eating just an average American diet which is what these guys were doing and the potential is there to gain that much muscle, there's nothing to worry about. You're getting enough protein. And these pundits hectoring people to consume more protein, I think are doing more harm than good. So uh, Brad Pilon was convinced that 70 to 120 grams of protein a day was plenty for people even trying to build muscle. Probably need less if you're not pursuing uh, muscle building. But the point is, you don't need that much. Now you've probably heard of these experiments where they take animals and calorie restrict them and uh, almost invariably it's found that they'll actually live longer. But here's something that's interesting is the same effect to a large degree can be obtained by restricting protein and even more specifically by just restricting methionine which is a common amino acid in animal products. Methionine is thought to be related to the induction of cancer and aging pathways. So uh, a big part of the calorie restriction benefit can be obtained by just not eating as much methionine, which you do by eating a plant-based diet. Now the pro-meat, high-protein crowd will talk about the quality of protein and say that you need whey protein or egg protein or beef protein for the best health. But it's based on a false argument. Protein quality is as measured in the laboratory based on how quickly you can induce growth in rodents when they're growing. And it's true that those animal proteins will actually make rats grow more quickly compared to say like a soy protein or something like that. Well what's the reason for that? Well first of all young rats are growing far faster than human beings. Uh, their growth rate is like 10 times what it is for a human being. And the normal mother's milk of a rat it has like 10 times as much protein. But more importantly, they have a very high need for methionine because of fur. We don't have fur and hence we don't need the high levels of methionine. We can induce growth in human uh, babies and children just fine without having a rich source of methionine. All you need is an adequate amount which you can get from plants. And it's been shown that in adults exercising uh, with weights, trying to promote muscle gain, whether they're eating a plant-based diet or a, or a typical omnivorous diet, if the protein intakes are matched, the, the growth rate of muscle is identical. Human breast milk is designed to promote growth during the fastest period of growth and development in the whole human life cycle. As a percentage of calories, human breast milk is only about 5% protein. And by weight, it's only about 1% protein, and it gets the job done. So the idea that we need massive amounts of protein for good health is kind of ridiculous. Fairly recently, a hormone was discovered called FGF21, fibroblast stimulating factor 21. And it was found that FGF21 is intimately related with metabolic health, arterial health, and longevity. It was shown that if you give exogenous FGF21 to obese rats, they'll lose weight like crazy. And a study was done on human males where they raised the levels of FGF21 by getting them to eat less protein. They went from an average intake of 112 grams per day down to 64 grams per day, which is in sort of the regular recommended range. 
It was found that they lost more weight despite consuming more calories compared to when they were on a higher intake of protein. It's a pretty good deal. Eat more calories and lose more weight. The point being is more protein is not necessarily better. There's an amino acid called leucine and it's in high levels in animal foods. It's a branch chain amino acid. It probably has something to do with muscle growth um, and there's a bit of an industry out there promoting branch chain amino acid supplements. But according to Dr. Michael Greger, who did a review on this, there's really no solid proof that it actually does enhance muscle growth. But here's the thing. What it does do is it promotes higher levels of insulin-like growth factor 1, which promotes uh, aging and cancer, which is not a good thing. Now, whenever I check on chronometer, I'm always getting enough methionine and leucine without taking any supplements or consuming any animal products at all. Uh, just within the last few weeks, there was a lot of press out about taking protein supplements. And here's another concern. The Clean Label Project looked at 160 protein supplement products and did an analysis on them and found that 47% of them had excess levels of cadmium and or lead. These are things that we definitely don't want. Uh, unfortunately, it was actually the plant-based ones that had the highest levels of cadmium and lead. So I would steer clear. I think the evidence is clear with a reasonably planned plant-based diet with whole grains and legumes that you can get plenty of protein. It's not a concern. Getting back to the main point is that when it comes to protein, more is not necessarily better. The right amount is better and the right kind is better. That is plant-based over animal protein. If you found this interesting, please like and subscribe.